Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today we are reviewing the Lacrosse Pinecone. Now this is a foldable, full suspension e-bike. I'm gonna tell you all about it, so let's get into it. When it comes to the assembly of this bike, it was basically all together. Um, the only thing I had to do was attach these handlebars on it, and then after that, I was good to go. Now this bike will arrive to you as a class two e-bike, but it can be unlocked to class three. So class two will take you up to 20 miles an hour via your half twist throttle right here, your five levels of pedal assist, and your cadence sensor. This bike weighs 69 pounds, but has a payload capacity of 330 pounds. And currently this bike sells for $799 and comes with a two year warranty. It only comes in this high step version here. And they say the ideal rider height is from 5'3 to 6'3. It does come in two colors. You get it in black or you get it in this white that I have right here. Lacro says that the pine cone can do 30 miles via throttle only or up to 50 miles using pedal assist. It has a 48 volt, 500 watt rear hub motor with 1000 peak power and 60 Newton meters of torque. It comes with a seven speed transmission, a Shimano tourney derailleur and the standard Shimano seven speed thumb shifter. For stopping power, you have a non-branded mechanical disc brake system and 160 millimeter rotors. The front fork is spring loaded. It has 50 millimeters of travel and there are no preload or lockout capabilities. The rear shock is not adjustable and it has 25 millimeters of travel. It comes with 20 by three inch Lacrosse branded tires. They have a medium mountain bike pattern and they're puncture resistant. When it comes to the battery, it's 48 volt, 12.8 amp hours with 614 watt hours of power. It does not have any UL certification for the bike or the battery, but it is IPX4 rated, which means if it rains on me during this review, I'm gonna be totally fine and so will the bike. Now it does come with a two amp charger, which means it's going to take about six and a half to seven hours to charge. And you can do it while it's attached to the bike with this charging port right here, or you can remove the battery and charge it somewhere else. Since the battery is inside the frame, we are gonna have to unfold it so I can show you how to pull the battery out. But if you look at this bike on its own, it is 70 inches in length, which is about two to four inches longer than the average foldable e-bikes that I review. So to break this down, we're going to lift this up right here and just pull your handlebar down. Then we're gonna take this middle clamp, unhook it, bring it back upon itself, and that will give us access to the battery. When folded, the pine cone is 40 inches long, 31 inches tall, and 18 inches wide. Now that we have the bike open, we can access the battery, and we're gonna do that right here. Now it does come with two keys. And what we want to do is we want to put the key inside. There's a hole underneath here. You want to put that in there. You're going to need that hole to not only unlock the battery, but to start the bike, you're going to turn it and unlock it, pull the key out, and then your battery will slide right on out. And then to put it back in, well, you just slide it back in, put your key in and lock it. Additional features include plastic fenders. You have aluminum pedals that fold. You have a quick release seat post. This is a slender, more stylish, more like speedy type seat. It has a rear rack that can hold up to 55 pounds and a telescopic stem. Let's talk about size and fit. Now, when it comes to moving these seats and stuff like that, this does have, it is numbered. So that really helps out. Right here is what it would be for your 5'3 rider. I mean, realistically, you could take it even lower if you needed to, but you're not supposed to do that. Now for your taller rider, since it is marked, we're gonna take it all the way up to right there. And then we're just gonna unhook this stem and put it right there. And that's for your 6'3 rider. Now, since I am five foot nine with a 32 inch inseam, I do like the fact that these are numbered. Because right there is where I want to be. And this is what I look sitting on the bike. Now, when it comes to being full suspension, the front forks work really well. I don't know about this back fork yet, though. We'll find out during the actual review. Cockpit operations. On your left-hand side, you have a very smooth uh, faux leather type grip right here. It is double locking, so it's not going to move on you. And then right here is your front brake lever. And then right here is your display. Before you can turn the bike on, 
you have to use your key to turn the battery off. Once you do that, well, then you just hold down the M button until the display comes on. As you can see, it is a black and white display. This is gonna show you your power that you are putting out. This shows your battery indication and it has six bars instead of five. This is your current speed and this is your odometer. If you hit the M button, it's gonna bounce between trip, voltage, which we definitely want, your current, and the amount of time you're on the bike. To move up into pedal assist levels, when you hit the plus button, you can see on the display that it shows you all five levels. Then to go down in pedal assist levels, you're just gonna use the minus button. To turn the headlight on, you're just gonna hold the plus button until your headlight comes on, and you can see the headlight indicator on the display. To turn the light off, you're just gonna hold that plus button again. This front headlight, although small, seems to be brighter than other e-bikes in this category. When your headlight comes on, so does your tail light. Now my camera is making it flicker, and then whenever you hit the brakes, well, it just brightens up. If you don't have the headlight on, the brake function still works. Let's set it up for class three speeds. We're gonna hold the plus and minus button down, and it's gonna give us our P settings. Let's go all the way up to P8. This is where we can adjust our speed settings, and it looks like the highest we can set it is 51 kilometers. To lock that in, just hold your M button down, and now we're good to go. What do you say we get out of here, and let's see what this Lake Rose Pine Cone can do. All right, guys, we are here on the 606 Trail here in Chicago. I have the bike in pedal assist zero, which means it's not providing me any assistance when it comes to the pedaling. And right now I have it in gear three, and we're cruising at 10 miles an hour. Today is going to be a high of like the mid 80s. It's like 83 degrees right now, so we should be able to get the most that we can out of this battery. Let's go ahead and test out the throttle. Now I have it in pedal assist number one. We're gonna see if the throttle is dictated by the pedal assist levels. Oh, it takes off, uh, well, it takes off pretty well. And no, it is uh, by the way that we are increasing speed, there is no way that this is connected to your pedal assist level. And it looks like with throttle only that we are able to get up to 23 miles an hour. Now we're gonna test out pedal assist only. I have it in pedal assist level one. I put it down into gear two to make it easy to take off. Um, I felt it kick in pretty close, but it is barely providing any assistance. I mean, I feel like we are basically riding without any assistance, but we are in pedal assist number one and we're doing about six miles an hour. Let's go ahead and put it into pedal assist number two. And I don't really feel a difference between one and two. We're still just creeping along. Let's try pedal assist number three. All right, now I'm starting to feel something. Not a whole lot though. I feel like all, I mean, yeah, we're picking up like what, a couple of miles ahead, but if you look at how much power is coming to us, there's nothing going on with this display right here. So it's barely providing us any power and now we're cruising at 10.6 miles an hour. Let's see what pedal assist number four does. Oh, finally, there we go. Now I feel it. Yeah, now we gotta start going up in gear. Although if you look at the power, that it's giving to the motor, it's not a whole lot. It just kicks in just enough to keep you at a steady pace to where you can feel it. So we're cruising at 14 and a half miles an hour in pedal assist number four. Let's go ahead and kick it into pedal assist number five. There we go. Now we notice I went ahead and put it into gear seven. Yeah, and once you hit pedal assist five, this thing just takes off. If you missed cockpit operations, I did unlock this bike from a class two to a class three. And it looks like 23 miles an hour is gonna be our fastest and top speed. Let's take a look at the display versus the, the speedometer here. And it looks like they are correct. I mean, it is a little bit off, but it's bouncing around between the speeds. But when I was holding it there for a few seconds, here we go at like 14 miles an hour. Maybe it's just a little bit off by like a half a mile per hour, which is not that big of a deal. But overall, I think that it's gonna be about as close as it can be. Let's go ahead and do some speed tests. Now this throttle is gonna be limited at 22.9 miles an hour because it doesn't wanna go faster than the 23. So let's see how long it takes. It does quick pick up quickly. We just gotta see how long it's gonna take us to get to the 22.9 miles an hour, but it is pretty quick. Not fast enough to throw you off the bike, but quick enough to where you can feel it and all of the uh, speed is consistent. Boom, we get 23 back there for a hot second and then it jumped back down. So that was relatively quick. Now let's go ahead and try it in 
pedal assist only. I have it in pedal assist number five. I have it in gear two. Let's see how long it takes. Oh, let's get going. Ooh, okay, almost went like three quarter of a turn before it picked up and now we are climbing. Yeah, we already hit 23 back there. <laughs> that was that was pretty quick. All right, guys, it is time for the brake test. We're only gonna do this once because I wanna conserve the power for the sand test, but we're gonna get it all the way up to that 23 miles an hour and then hit the brakes. Woohoo! Stopped right at 29 feet. I'm pretty happy with how these brakes felt. Uh, even though they are mechanical, these levers felt good and everything felt in control. I think it stopped pretty decent as well. So I see no need to make any improvements or adjustments to that. So, so far we're doing pretty good. This seat, uh, it's, it's a little thin. We're gonna see by the end of this uh, ride how it's going to handle. But so far, I mean, it's comfortable. I'm just wondering how it's gonna be for the long haul. These grips, these uh, faux leather grips seem to be working just fine. Uh, the handlebar width and these grips just make it so that I don't think your hands would fall asleep by uh, with these grips. I think you'd be okay. I do like the fact that this bike is stretched out a little bit farther than other folding bikes that I have uh, reviewed. So that way it just makes you feel like you have more, more leg room. It is time for the off-road part. Here's where I cut through this park and we take the off-road path. Oh, this actually feels pretty good. I got some battery rattling, which could be easily fixed. Ooh, oh, oh. <laughs> all right, let's shoot off this ramp here. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> the full suspension, I can tell you what, I can, I can feel that I was bottoming out the, uh, the backside of it. I'm gonna show you something here in a second. Now, if you don't know, you would probably think that there is something wrong with this, like this is an O-ring and that it popped out of the shock, but, or the spring, but it did not. This, you normally have it up at the top, and then when it compresses, it tells you how far it's gone down. Well, we're bottoming out, so it's pushing this little ring all the way down to the very bottom. I mean, if you have this bike, there's no even, there's no need to have this. Just cut this thing off. Uh, normally they have it on the front fork, but you can't make any adjustments to this, so there was no need to have it. So they didn't really need to have it on this either. As I set up for the hill climb, uh, it, the display shows it's at 7.7 .7 miles. Strava shows it's at 8.25. If I take too long, this display is gonna shut off and this trip meter is going to reset. So that's the kind of uh, bike that this is. So if you wanna track your mileage, you're gonna have to use a third-party app like Strava. So if that happens, we know that we've actually gone eight miles and 25, not 7.7. .7. It is time for the hill climb test. This hill goes from a 15% grade up to a 20% grade. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna try it with throttle first, see if we have everything that we need to make it up this hill and let's go and see how it does. I mean, I figure with the way that it takes off, yeah, see, we're gonna be just fine. I knew that this bike was gonna be able to make it up by just throttle only. Yeah, easy peasy, no problem at all. Now let's do pedal assist. I have it in pedal assist number five. Let's go and see how easy it's gonna be. Oh yeah, pretty easy. It's, it's like no effort at all. And that's how I thought it would be. Yeah, super easy, nice. Let's put some miles on this bike and see if we can uh, go test it out in the sand. Oh, I forgot to check out to see if we notice any ghost pedaling. So we've got it into pedal assist number five. We're cranking it out. I mean, we didn't have any ghost pedaling before. Let's see. Oh, now we're in gear seven. Woo. There we go. Yeah, no ghost pedaling. Wonder if I can get this thing up to, yeah, we're 24 miles an hour. Can I get it up to 25? Let's go. Nobody's on the trail, let's go. Oh yeah. Woo, has burning my legs. 24.3 was the highest. Ooh, this road is rough, but they are redoing it. So that'll be awesome here in a couple of days. This is one of the main roads that I take to go to uh, the Lakeshore Trail. And it was getting pretty rough. So this will be super nice when they get it done. This road is a good test <laughs> for the uh, 
for the dual suspension is a little chunky, but it would have definitely been more rough on a bike that didn't have a rear suspension on it. Check it out, we have made it out here to Lakeshore Trail. This is the Chicago skyline, man. I love it out here. I come out here every chance that I can. Right here is the sand test. That's what we're gonna do right now. But uh, I think we might have an advantage or disadvantage. It's been raining a lot here and it was raining last night and this morning. But it looks like they came out here and made it nice just for me to mess it up. So let's see how we're gonna do in the sand. I gotta put it in pedal says five in case I have to help pedal and let's go. Yeah, oh, I think it's to our advantage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So far, I'm not even pedaling. So this thing is just doing really well. It's just cruising right on through. If I, let me see if I pedal. Oh, if I pedal now, I feel like I'm almost going too fast. Oh, <laughs> this thing is excellent. Woo. All right. Yep. It'll get you to the beach and it will get you through the beach. Not bad for a budget e-bike. There it is, a closer view of the Chicago skyline. You know, we're doing pretty good with battery, or we were, <laughs> it just dropped down to its last three bars and that's uh, concerning, but right now we are fighting the wind. So when I turn around, at least I will have the wind at my back. I don't see us being able to make it too much farther though before uh, I turn around. I kept it pretty easy on the uh, throttle and pedaling on the way here, because I wanted to do that sand test. But now that we've gotten that done, I just wanna show you this view and then we'll head back home. All right, guys, I just remembered, I have this voltmeter and it shows we're doing like 45, 46 volts right now. So let me turn around. We're gonna take a look at my voltage chart and then we'll know how much battery power that I have left. It said we were at 46, so that means we have 45% battery left. Right now it bumped up to 48, but you know, the 48 shows that we're at 60, which would make sense considering the amount of bars that have taken off. But once we start going, then it drops down to 45, which is at 40%. So we can go up just a little bit more before we turn around and head back. Actually, let's go ahead and do a mileage check since we have this done right here. It shows that we are at, the trip is 14 miles, it shows that we are at 1510. So it's about a mile off. Not bad, not bad, but you know, as soon as this bike turns off, it's gonna reset that trip mileage. Once again, use a third-party app if you want to track your mileage. I went ahead and turned back since it shows that we have 40% of battery left. And this way, it assures me that I can make it close to home without having to pedal. From here, we're just doing throttle only. I've been mostly doing throttle only, but from here on out, that is the plan. Now, I do notice that these pedals, th these pedals feel small. And if you were not going to fold this bike up, and have it in a super tiny space, you could switch these out with like normal pedals and that would be a much better uh, riding experience. Pedals are easy, they're cheap. You could probably even get wider folding pedals. Yeah, this seat, yikes. I would definitely have to trade this out. This thing is just too hard for my bum. Okay, let's go ahead and test out the walk feature. You know, I went ahead and dropped it down into zero pedal assist and then it should just by hitting this button, if we should start going forward. And look, we have a hill right here, so it's going to take us up the hill. It's not very fast, and it's not very powerful, but it will help you get this bike up the hill. <laughs> uh, I like this folding bike. I don't like the seat though. We have dropped down to two bars, although we are in a wind tunnel right now, and we're always fighting the wind when it comes to this park, but we're still holding throttle only. We are back on the 606 trail. I have 3.3 miles to the house. I have a feeling this battery is gonna last longer than that, so we might have to do a lap or two until we are able to exhaust this battery. All uh, right, we have made it to the end of the 606, but we have been at about 41 to 42 uh, volts going on. So let's see what we're at battery wise. It keeps bouncing down to one bar and then it's coming up to two. So at 41%, we're down to 15. 
Um, so it's down between 10 and 15%. I mean, right now it's at 43, so it's showing it's at 30, but the moment I take off, it's just gonna drop down. So what we're looking for is once we hit like 40 or below, that's when things are gonna get interesting. So let's get back on the 606 and drain this battery. That's a pimp bike right there. That thing is nice. Our battery is very low and we are still cruising at 19 miles an hour. There's no pulsing, there's no throbbing. We are just moving right along. I went ahead and turned around. We are a mile away from the house right now. So that way, if it does die, I won't have that far to ride. Let me go ahead and take a look real quick at our trip, 21.7. This bike is definitely going farther than what I thought it would, which is a good thing if somebody's looking for distance, because I've been doing nothing but pushing this bike just to go as fast as I can for as long as I can. Well, now we're at 39 uh, volts on the battery. And that is 5%. So we've been doing pretty good at 5% under load. This bike has been cruising at 18 miles an hour with no pulsing. Well, I don't think we have that much before we kill it. So let's, uh, let's go out one more time. Okay, we're not getting any assist. <laughs> oh no. All right, we have already lost the assist from the bike. Let's see if we can pick some up from pedal assist. And no, we cannot. We are not getting any assist. So at this point, we're just gonna take it home. I should have just brought it all the way home, but uh, I guess at 5% is when we're gonna, is when we're gonna lose things. Matter of fact, let me pull over here. So the display shows we're at 22.6. And Strava says we're at 22.4. So that's where we're going to have to be when it comes to overall mileage, as I'm not getting any more assist to this bike. Uh, there's a little battery indicator right here showing that uh, it's no longer providing assist. And the only thing the battery is doing is giving us uh, the display. It is time for my final thoughts. I have to tell you, this bike went farther than what I thought it would. You know, when I was thinking of the smaller, the 614 watt hours of power. I was like, this bike's not going to go that far. I expect it to go about 20 miles. The display showed it went 22.6 miles. Strava shows that we went 24.2 miles. Now I trust Strava more than I do this display because it's super basic. And I have to tell you that if you're just going off the display, you're going to be going farther than what you actually think you are going on the bike. So you might want to use a third party app like Strava or something like that to track your mileage. Now, when it comes to the comfort of this bike, these grips actually did pretty well. This seat though, no, not a fan, no bueno. Uh, in about 15 miles on this seat, I was ready to get off of it. I was moving around trying to find a happy spot and there was none. So, but that's just, that's a preference thing. That could be me. Uh, it might be a different experience with you, but just keep that in mind. A seat is only like 20 to 30 bucks, so it's no big deal. This uh, rear suspension, it seemed to work pretty good. Um, you know, I did bottom out a lot on it due to my weight because I'm 225 pounds. But I think if you put like a suspension seat post on this and a different seat, you're going to ride this bike and it's just going to be nice and cushy for you. Now, I showed you that this bike is good in the sand. It's good at climbing hills and it's actually pretty comfortable. I like the fact that it is a little bit bigger than the other folding bikes. So you have that extra room to kind of stretch out this horn rather loud and works pretty good. So overall, I think for $799, this is one heck of a buy. I mean, even the mechanical brakes seem to work fine for me and I liked the handles on them and normally that's not the thing. Now, if you are interested in the Lacros pine cone, well, I'm gonna leave a link in the description down below. If I have a discount code, I'll throw that down below as well so that way you have it and you can get the best price on this bike. But that's it. That's all I can say about the Lacrosse Pinecone. And I want to thank you for watching. So until I see you again, enjoy the ride.